coolest couple ever on the show today. <laughs> Our guests are Dr. Madalena and her husband, Chris. Um, Dr. Madalena was a leading cardiologist and her husband, Chris, um, an entrepreneur. They came together through their own path of healing and became heart intelligence coaches. Um, they're best-selling authors and risers leading in the heart intelligence space. So good. So, so, so good. Um, their uh, company is called HeartQ, like IQ, but HeartQ. So it, their website is just heartq.com. And then their um, social media accounts are HeartQ official. So find them. They are incredible. Um, they're going to talk about like blending their paths of like the programs and how you should be and how that, you know, they got married when they were in that energy and then went through this huge transformation together. And it's just like so eye opening, so many valuable insights. They are walking the walk of what they're talking about. You can just tell through the nuances of how they, um, just how they express themselves, how they, you know, uh, openly talk about their process. You can tell that they, yeah, they're doing their own work and they're just incredible. Um, they do have a masterclass that I'll link up for you guys. Um, they do one-on-one -on -one coaching. They are awesome. You guys are in for a treat. So we'll go ahead and get into it. Um, here are Dr. Madalena and Chris from HeartQ. All right, Dr. Madalena and Chris, I'm so excited to talk to you guys because what you're doing with heart intelligence and especially uh, Madalena coming from this kind of scientific cardiologist background and then going through your own soul healing and you're like, hold on a second, like feelings matter and all this stuff. And then, you know, Chris, you mean like, hey, that actually I'm kind of watching her and that matters. You know, I'm really I just kind of want to hear your journey of how this started first and then we'll dive into heart intelligence and what you guys mean by that. So how, how did we get here to this business that you guys have created, which is awesome and so needed? Well, we're super excited, super excited mm -hmm. to be here with you. Um, yeah. So basically what happened is, you know, everything up until everything shifted about 10 years ago and 10 years ago on the outside, it really looked like for me personally, like I had it all a very busy, successful cardiologist. I was a leader in multiple, you know, expertise areas. I was a international speaker, you know, two girls, beautiful girls, loving husband. And, you know, everybody coming to me with everything on the outside, it looked like, oh my God, like this is perfect, you know, fit, you know, yeah. fashionable. So everybody's like, <laughs> wow, like she's perfect. Like it looked like that. Right. <laughs> right. And then, but really what was happening internally, um, I was struggling. Like I was living in survival and, mm -hmm. and I was just trying to make it. Everything seemed like an up, uphill uh, battle for me. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, just the life of a cardiologist. You know, I've been in this field for almost, what, 17 years now. Mm -hmm. The life of a cardiologist is super busy. It's like life and death, emergencies, high pressures, right. high demand. But you're not sleeping a lot. You're on call. I mean, it's crazy. It's like everybody, like the heart is the very last thing before you die. So, I mean, you can imagine, you know. Um, and and for me, I was trying to balance that. And then you hear I get two girls, my husband, my time. Um, and I just it felt like I was living like I was running on the treadmill, mm -hmm. just running. Mm -hmm. And the pace kept getting faster and faster and faster. And mm -hmm. I was doing more and more and more. I uh, didn't know it at that time, but I was living from a plethora of these patterns yeah. that were like these strings, you know, pushing me to do all these things. And I was just like, oh, this is normal. I I just have to do more and I'll get there, you know, <laughs> overachiever, you know. Mm -hmm. People pleaser, perfectionism, yes sayer, like self denial, self sacrifice, and mm -hmm. um, you just kept. I and I thought, you know, that's the thing. In my own way, I was perfectionist. I was doing everything to the maximum. I thought this is normal. I just have to do more. Maybe then I'll be happy. I'll just have to do more, and then it will get easier. Um, and running, running, like the running exercise, running was my way to keep staying in this matrix, like to kind of keep making it. <laughs> So that if any feelings would come that I didn't have time for, you know, if any of my body was showing me signs, I would just run and feel happy mm -hmm. and keep going. Mm -hmm. And for me, the, the crisis that happened is that, um, like, I went for a run one day, just a normal, beautiful day in Portland, Oregon. And I ended up having this sudden onset of severe back pain that basically um, I had to limp home. And I was like, well, okay, we'll just go away. I'll massage it. 
But little did I know that not only would it not go away, but it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. It actually mm-hmm. spread uh, plantar fasciitis, hip problem, illosoas. I mean, it, it, mm-hmm. my whole entire body was in severe pain. And mm-hmm. here I am, the doctor, scientist, you know, go get her everything. I get everything that I want. Uh, I went to all these doctors. I went to like all the tests possible, the best of the best. And nothing, there was like nothing. And I was like, am I just crazy? What the hell is going on? You know, for Mm -hmm. one year, this is what happened. I was like not giving up, fighting, trying to make it, you know, he was trying to support me. And then like after one year, everything was getting worse. I couldn't sleep at night. I don't like taking meds. I was taking meds to sleep. I mean, it was like, I couldn't even walk and I had this numbness in my whole body. Um, You know, and I just, I just stopped. I just like, I crumbled. I had a breakdown and I just said, what the hell is going on? I was, I just let go into allowing myself to break down because I hadn't allowed that. Yeah. And then somehow along the way, this, this, this pain uh, crisis expanded into an existential crisis. I just started having this depression and anxiety and like lost. It's like, why not being able to run got me here? Of course, it, running was an addiction. It was hiding all the pain that I was not facing, mm-hmm. that I didn't know how to deal with. And now all of a sudden I couldn't, you know, avoid run away from my feelings. And so now here I am like trying to deal with these feelings that I don't know what the hell I never knew how to deal with feelings and, and stuff. And my body's getting messages. And so that that was my journey where basically I, it's it's really interesting that because I wasn't stopping my body stopped me our body is so intelligent yeah. right so my body said stop doing stop doing stop running and start being and of course I was fighting it and when finally when I just like stopped I just stopped and I think I got a book by you know Louise Lisa. Hay yeah. and Wayne Dyer Um, Mm -hmm. and something happened there because I was so desperate to heal my pain. So I can go back to, you know, running that I was willing to do anything. I was like anything, just give it to me. I was so open. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's when I started reading, I started reading, I started opening my awareness and from one thing to another, this pain and this existential crisis became the portal, a portal where I started like realizing, oh my God, I've been out of alignment with my soul. I've been living from my nervous system. I've been living from the pressure of the psychological conditioning that I hadn't even had any aware. I'd be like this puppet. I was a puppet with these strings and I had not no awareness. Like I turned the lights on and I saw with all the workshops and all the modalities that we've done, all the healing, um, I was able to see, wow, I was so misaligned. I was living there was some trauma that happened in my childhood and I hadn't realized how that impacted my whole entire reality. And that's when I, I started, you know, and he joined me and then we started just inching our way towards the path of the heart. And that's to me like that healing where I realized, wow, even all the workshops and all the healings and the transformations. And in so many years we did that um, recognizing that everything was about me returning back to myself, me feeling the presence of my, my authentic self, my wholeness, my truth, um, is right here in my heart. It's from the place of feeling of that truth and living life as an expression of that love, rather than living life, reaching out for love outside to fill up on the inside. I mean, Mm -hmm. so basically together after all this, you know, a decade of all these workshops and modalities and we got certifications and all kinds of things um now we we pair together and this is like what i realize is my deeper my mm-hmm. deeper calling which is to really help people here heal at a deeper level by really them reconnecting and realigning with their heart essence and living mm-hmm. life in that authentic purposeful meaningful passionate aliveness way you know the lights are on Mm -hmm. instead of lights are off looking for the lights somewhere outside so that's 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 my journey in a nutshell and and uh, I don't know if you want to yeah yeah no I'll I'll uh, I'll go a little bit into my my story and how I got here but I just want to point out that uh, you know I was along with you obviously on this journey Mm -hmm. you know before 10 years ago when you were going through all that um, you know on the treadmill 
And my God, even now I'm uh, hearing it again. I'm like, I'm feeling all the anxiety that I used to feel back then because we were both in, kind of in, on the same, you know, on our own treadmills, but both running, or, you know, yeah. unconsciously, you know, right. uh, unaware of where are we going? How fast are we going? Why are we doing this? You know, and I, I <laughs> even now just listening to you, I'm feeling again yeah. the, the anxiety I used to feel back then. So mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so in, in my story is in, in, in a nutshell, basically, you know, I always kind of split it between uh, two big chapters, if you want, uh, the chapter be- before 10 years ago, and then after, you know, since 10 years ago, uh, because that's that's where the, the shift happened for me as well. Um, you know, before 10 years ago, basically, um, you know, I, I grew up um, with my dad being a diplomat. I, I got to travel with him ever since I was very young, ever since I was three years old. I got to travel with him uh, wherever he was stationed, right? So, um, you know, from from an outside, just like like you, from outside, it looked like wow, what, what an amazing thing to do, right? To to get to travel to different countries, live there, you know, get to experience different people, um, different ways of being, you know, what an amazing way to live. And mm-hmm. the truth is that yes, it, it was, it was, it really was. Mm-hmm. Um, but like anything, it also had kind of like its dark side. The thing that that yeah. you know you don't talk about, you don't see at the surface, but you get to experience being in that. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, you know, basically, the dark side for me, the way that I experienced it, was that you know the diplomatic environment is very structured environment, right? Mm-hmm. It's 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 filled with protocols, ways of being. You have to be in the specific way. You cannot, uh, you know, get outside the norms. You don't have that freedom of of expression, right? Your authentic expression. Mm-hmm. And my dad, you always used to say that, um, you know, uh, Chris, be careful what you say, be careful how you behave, because everything that you do and say, and just everything that you are, is going to be a reflection on your country, and. To me, that was so confusing as a three-year-old. I, like, no I, pressure. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure, right? Just the whole country is depending on every action you <laughs> exactly. take. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it was hard for me to process, but I mean, I, I I modeled. I modeled that, right? And and but and of course, my mom was also uh, very strict to, with me to make sure that I stay within the norms and all of these things. And, mm-hmm. you know, the dark side of that was that I grew up um, always looking outside for how should I behave? Right. What, how should I be? Right. I was looking at uh, looking at others to reflect back to me the expectations of me. Right. So imagine doing this for, you know, you know, the first two decades of my life. That's how it was. Uh, that right. got conditioned in me. So yeah. Uh, that was kind of the dark side. Then, of course, I, I mean, I'm originally from Romania. So I moved to the U.S. Um, gosh, what, 20, 20 years ago. Uh, and, um, you know, we, we, we met, we, you know, we, we were completely unconscious at that time, you know, uh, just, we, we all said that, um, we were, you know, uh, a match made in pattern heaven <laughs> because we each came with our own patterns of, you know, and we were just perfect, perfect match. And, uh, we lived, uh, you know, quite a few years in this, on this treadmill, like, like we, like, to, like we talked about. And then about 10 years ago, uh, what prompted us was obviously her injury that she talked about, which was really the turning, the turning point. And, um, you know, uh, for the first, what year or so, as you were going through your own experience, uh, of, of, um, of trying to figure things out, um, you know, we were still kind of continuing with, with in the way of the patterns, kind of going in that momentum. But once you started going on your spiritual journey, your own personal development journey, very soon after that, I not I started noticing changes, and um, like really truly amazing changes in her and the way that that impacted our relationship. And of course, I knew what she was reading, but it was deeper than that. And I was like, hold on a second, what's going on here? Something, something is, is happening here. So mm-hmm. I went to her and I said like, what are you doing? You know? And so she took me on that journey. Like, okay, let me show you, let me unpack for you what's going on. And, and like, look at all of these books and all of this information. Right. Nice. And that's what kind of got me going because I realized, I mean, at that point I realized, uh, I always joke about this, but it's not a joke. Um, as a man living with a conscious woman, is not easy. <laughs> okay, there is uh, there is no place to hide, like really. <laughs> and so, um, so I had a choice to, um, you know, I mean, it was the obvious choice to grow myself as well. You know, go on this personal development journey, you know, spiritual journey. So, 
that that's kind of what got us both started um on this on this our own personal journey and then soon very well soon yeah about five years ago friends of ours started noticing changes in us they noticed some some things that we're doing and so they were asking okay hold, hold on a second what are you doing you know so we started getting all these questions and and you know having our 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 uh, network so to speak our people around us asking us now well, what are you guys doing that's what kind of prompted us to say well let's look at what exactly we've been doing let's see how we're living our life and let's um you know kind of like put this on paper let's codify this let's create a, a program let's create something around this way of being right mm -hmm. and that's what's culminated in what we call now kind of like unofficially but you know the heart cue lifestyle right mm -hmm. heart cue heart intelligence heart cue lifestyle mm. yeah. okay oh my gosh so many <laughs> wonderful things but i just have to highlight how beautiful i actually want to ask you madalena like like so doing mindset coaching it's not always couples that hire me it's almost never couples that hire me right mm -hmm. it's it's one person <laughs> and what i see often is like a pattern is like when we start to do our own personal development <laughs> the first step is like it's like judgment it's like judgment mania it's like like you just learned what boundaries were last week and set your first boundary ever. And then you're like, my husband has no boundaries, right? At this like kind of judgment. I'm like, you just learn, you, you don't either. <laughs> yeah, you're getting there. It's good. But like, and so I want, I, I find this really beautiful that it doesn't sound like you did that. It doesn't sound like you were like, you need to do this too. And look at all these stuff I'm learning, like forcing it down his throat. You just did it. Can you talk about just your mindset around that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, it's a journey. <laughs> so initially when all this stuff was happening with me, like through me, and I had these deep epiphanies, deep, it's kind of like a remembering, oh, mm -hmm. oh my God, I've been living Oh, wait, that's not, oh, wait, this. And then the depth that I was experiencing, like when you're like truly in yourself and you realize like, wow, this is truth. Like this expansion, like this is, mm -hmm. this is possible. And you're going down in this and everything's shifting because you're just breaking down those old energies. Right. So when I was experiencing all of that, what I was realizing is that, you know, you know, the depth that I was experiencing, if there, if he was going to have no participation in that. I was like, well, how are we going to truly connect? Like how we, if yeah, I'm this down, is a big thing. Yeah. Like, for a lot of people, a lot of, we have a lot of friends and they're, this stuff is happening. One of them wakes up. It's like, oh, oh, what? Mm -hmm. I'm awake. You're just, the awakening is just the beginning. It's not like, that's it, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like awakening and then there's breakdowns and breakthroughs, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and yes. so then, then it's like, you know, when one awakens, then it's like, what's happening between, you know, so there's mm -hmm. many ways, there's no one way that's perfect. Yeah. But for me, like what I was realizing is like, wow, to be truly connecting, like, how is that going to be? Because I can't be on this artificial way and I'm going in this deep way. And, you know, so there was a, a period of like back and forth of alignment. Yeah alignment alignment you know and I was like there was a part of me I'm like you you don't want to go down this path this is so beautiful like this is false matrix it's the blue pill from the matrix let's take right. the red pill and go to the truth and and all of that so there was a part of me I did resist you know I was like I wanted him because I realized like I don't want him to suffer anymore staying in mm -hmm. that matrix is suffering you know mm -hmm. and and so I did I was I did try that and then I just kind of toggled back and forth and I said well that's his path yeah, and my path. And yeah. then he on his own, I think initially he went to these some of these uh, events, you know, some of these workshops and some of these uh, retreats, more maybe to connect with me. But then he realized, you know, he came back, he's like, Oh, I realized like, this is from me. And I yeah. think that's what happens a lot of times, maybe one person will do a retreat or an event, maybe mm -hmm. to connect with their partner, but then they realize, Oh, my God, they start to see a mirror into mm -hmm. like their soul into their life. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's how it's been for us. And, and what we realize is that we almost now activate each other. When one has like a depth that's happening or realizations or something, then it's the other one is getting inspired. And it's like, wow, what are you doing? I want to know about that. You know, yeah. like, you know, he gets, he gets these ideas like cacao ceremony or Kundalini activation. And, and he's like, I'm going to go. And I'm like, wait, what's up? I want to go. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's this kind of activation, like yeah. we activate, you know, we were in flow yeah. with each other. And that's what I feel works the best. And if they're, yeah. you're right though, because sometimes the awareness can either come with judgment or it can come with compassion and allowance. Mm -hmm. and right. So and 
and I find that like when I, well, like it's kind of from Byron Katie's work, but whenever we want someone else to be different than they are, we're going to suffer because we're, that's completely outside of our control. And so then you kind of get in this place, like, wait, not only can I not control them, but that's a lot of judgment and fear. And I want to modulate them. So I don't have to feel uncomfortable. And then, so there's kind of, as you get a little further, there's kind of this letting go and respect piece that comes in of like, you get to do your life the way you want to do it. And so I thank you for sharing though, that at first, I mean, cause I, it's really common. I see that a lot in couples and it's like, there's this feeling of like self-shaming, I think in the person who's waking up because they're like, uh, like I want them to take this path, but I, Oh no, I need to let them be on their own path. But now I'm starting to feel like I'm better than them. No, I'm not better than them. And it's like this, like kind of <laughs> like horrible so place, you know? And so Chris, I'm curious, like, yeah. what was that like for you? Did you feel like, Oh, she's too good for me. She thinks she's too good. Or am I going to lose her? Or like, what? you yeah. know what I mean? Like what at that very beginning part, like, what was that like for you? Yeah. First of all, thank you so much for that question, because that is mm. such an, such an important point. Mm. Um, you know, like, like Marilena said, you, you know, we are, we, we actually know so many couples that again, one of them woke up um, mm. and you know, the, the process of awakening can happen in a moment, but the deconditioning process takes a lifetime, right? Yeah. So it's not like, it's not like, oh, <laughs> We're that's done. it. We're done, right? <laughs> you know. We levitate and we are in light. We all just turned into light. <laughs> exactly, right? And, and it's a process. It's a process for both part, for both uh, partners. But yes, if both partners are, don't kind of, you know, go on a, on a similar path, on at least a trajectory, right? Mm -hmm. We've had so many um, friends that just separated because, yeah. you know, it is what it is. Right, um, right. So yes, you know, there is an allowance once, you know, let's say that one of the partners wakes up first, right? You do have to kind of step into that allowance and to trust, right? To believe and to trust and to kind of say, yeah, this is my journey and everyone has their own journey. Mm -hmm. And from my, for, you know, from, from my point of view, the way that I experienced it was, you know, um, in the beginning, it was a, a curiosity, right? Mm -hmm. It was a, a curious, like, okay, I'm, I'm noticing some very amazing things happening here, right? Mm -hmm. So I did have that curiosity approach. But then, of mm -hmm. course, I also had a little bit of a um, comparison, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where the judgment came in, not judgment towards her, but more judgment towards myself. Like, mm -hmm. I felt inferior. I right. felt like I'm not enough, right? All of right. these things. So um, I realized that, you know, if I'm going to stay in the comparison frame, I'm going to keep judging myself and it's not going to feel good. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's things are just not going to work out. Right. So I shifted the comparison frame, the comparison lens to an inspiring lens. Yes. Right. So get, instead of comparing, just see how can I get inspired? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, if there is that um, connection, that love, and we know that that's going to be the glue of everything. And we, mm -hmm. we have the same vision of our life, right? Yeah. We say same value, same, you know, goal that we want to achieve in life then then we can allow each other to, to we can allow to be inspired by the other right exactly. so stepping into into that um uh, mindset if you want you know mm. it, it, it makes makes things so much easier so much smoother so yeah thank you for sharing that it makes sense why you guys are still married <laughs> yeah <laughs> because like what i see often is this pattern of somebody feels inferior and especially, sorry guys, I'm, I'm being really sexist right now, but I just see it a lot. It's like the guy, his ego feels threatened. And then, and then the pattern is I'm going to try to make you feel less than now. So I don't have to feel less than, and I'm going to criticize you and judge you. So I can, and all, I mean, it's like, go, why don't you go to the courthouse and get the divorce papers ready? You know what I mean? Cause like that pattern is so unhealthy. And if you switch it to inspired by her. I mean, it's just like the energy is like love and connection and openness. And, you know, it's yeah. definitely, it's, I feel like in a relationship, you can't, it's like totally detrimental if you lose respect or admiration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like now, wow, we're not in a great place. So that's so cool that you consciously chose to shift jealousy, comparison, these things into inspiration. I bet you guys do that. I do that with like anxiety. Let me turn this into excitement or let yeah. me just sit with this anxiety and feel it all the way. And then, you know, um, yes. Yes. and I have to, I have to hit on a couple of things also from your journey, Madalena. It was like, when you were talking, we're like cut from the same cloth and <laughs> 
I've had so many similar experiences. I was a runner, marathon runner and all this stuff and the overachiever Uh and the, you know, every award in high school and the president of everything and the leadership conference, you know what I mean? Like the overachiever. And I just thought it was fun back then. I just thought I loved achieving and doing my best. And like, there's, you know, just completely unconscious of any of the childhood trauma, any of the patterns, any of the coping mechanisms. Right. And so when you hit on running, that's such a good thing for my audience. Cause probably a lot of them found me through health and fitness. Right. And you, we hear this a lot. Like I can't go to the gym. I'm so depressed. I can't run. I'm so depressed. I am not a cool person to be around if I can't, you know, run or whatever. And yeah, there's a neurotransmitter, a very temporary neurotransmitter drop that will happen if you're accustomed to certain levels of exercise, but it's so much more than that. It's like, now I have to sit and feel the things that I was ramping up dopamine so high that I just didn't really have to feel them. And now I have to sit in them. And it's like, I get depressed if I can, it's like, yeah, yeah, there's a small health aspect to it. But what I've learned through my similar, like letting go of the achiever thing and going inside and feeling my feelings and all this is that if you'll be brave enough, cause I hear a lot of courage, a lot of courage, just sit with those uncomfortable feelings from both of you guys. But if you're like able to sit through it, I have found personally that like, they will just work their way out like a splinter out of your skin. Like you don't even have to do much. You just have to feel it all the way. And of course, this is your guys's area. So I wanted to kind of shift into this whole thing of like the process of sitting through feelings. Um, for me, you know, especially runners. Oh my gosh. We are the, the best at positive self-talk because when you're out there on the marathon course, it's like (laughs) you either have positive self-talk or you you're done, right? Like you're like, legs are going to explode. You're blacking out. Like you're dehydrated. You're just like, you got this. It's all good. You're doing great. (laughs) You know, and that served me (laughs) in a lot of ways in my life. But what I realized, what I realized it wasn't serving me and is like not allowing me to go into sadness or fear, or, you know, it was just like, you're doing great, Tara, like, keep it up, keep up the great work, you know, positive (laughs) self-talk Tara. And so can you talk about this topic of, Ooh, the fear of feeling the uncomfortable emotions and what you guys have learned in that arena? Oh, I think that you're hitting on like the heart of what we're talking about, because um, there's there's a balance, you know, there's a balance between like the resilience of like, I'm not going to give up. Like it's when it get hard in life. You're not Mm -hmm. just like, okay, it's too hard. I'm going to stop. You know, there's this, there's this thing about like, it is tough when you go outside the comfort zone, outside the edge, you know? So there is a balance of like, yes, I, I got this. I can do this. Like that's powerful. That's important. You know, wherever you apply it, but some, you know, like with that runners, that whole perfectionism mindset, a lot of times it gets into this extremism where that's all you allow, because that's the thing that has gotten you to those prizes and across the finish lines. And so like you, there's this like almost a blockage or rejection of everything else. But the problem Mm -hmm. is like the sadness and the grief and the anger, all of those stuff they need to be felt because they're messengers. There's yep. there, they are feelings that come from whether it's now or what they're, they're here to be seen. They, they need to be experienced. And, and what I have found, even in the cardiology realm, you know, patients, when people suppress those natural, authentic feelings that come up and we, we like to call, you know, feeling versus emotion. Feeling is just that pure feeling not attaching a story, not right. like I'm sad because, you know, he rejected me right. and he, then she doesn't love me. And now all of a sudden, <laughs> there's a story and there's a right. blank. So now right. you're like displacing, you're saying I'm sad because of that person. Now you just gave your, you gave your power away to that person. You're a victim, right? So for mm-hmm. us, like with a heart, it's about feeling without a story and without it you know, yeah. ca- blaming someone for your, your feelings. So there's like just sitting, sitting with that and feeling with that. And it's so powerful because when we do that, when we actually allow ourselves to feel, just yeah. simply feel that feeling, it is, it actually, you know, I think what makes it stay longer when people stay for like, you know, hours and days and weeks, you know why they stay? It's not because of the feeling there. It's resistance. Yeah. And actually the even bigger reason is because they're creating a story around it. Yeah. And that story is taking them back to the trauma and they're just recycling and making the trauma <laughs> bigger. Now they're not, they're not, you know, they're not sitting with the feeling they're sitting with that trauma and it's all going trauma. here. It's all right here. It's all and in the mind. Yeah. And so the, the whole point of our process is 
you don't go to the here, which is a reaction, which is emotional reaction and the trauma and the stories and the pattern. Mm -hmm. You come and you just feel with your heart. And that's the power of the heart. The heart, you allow yourself to feel and, and to allow yourself to express in any mm -hmm. way, shape and possible. Maybe that grief needs to be cried out like crazy. Maybe the anger needs an energy to like, you know, get a bat and hit something. Yeah. Because yeah. it needs to be unleashed. It needs to be right. expressed. And when it's allowed to be expressed without resistance, now all of a sudden you got, you're open. Now all of a sudden it's like, wow, mm -hmm. I have space. I have mm -hmm. capacity. I have availability. You know, and, mm -hmm. and so these are like what we call, you actually get energy from that. It's actually mm -hmm. enlivening. So I think this is, this right. is what it is. And I, and I feel maybe for us women, I think for men, you know, I know, I don't know really to share your story because like, Men and feelings, you know, we as women, you know, we kind of get it and we kind of like want to realize <laughs> that, oh, wait, it's courageous to feel. Yeah. It's actually powerful to sit and feel, right? Yeah. We, you know, but I think for men, there's such a strong program against totally. feeling is weak. I better mm -hmm. think I'm not going to go there. You know, there's like such mm -hmm. a, like, I can't, then I lose control. Then I can't mm -hmm. be in charge. And then I can't take, I can't take care. I can't support. I think for men, I, you know, I don't want to share it for you, but mm -hmm. you know, probably it, it's, there's, there's programs. Against. Oh yeah. Let's yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And let's hear, cause it's kind of like for yeah. men, it's like only anger is allowed. <laughs> yeah. That's the only one. <laughs> you're so right. It's so true. <laughs> Be yeah. cool, calm, collected, or mad, <laughs> and then you're a man. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's it's uh it's so true. You know, I mean, um, men have a such a different conditioning than than women growing up. You know, um, I've I've definitely had that. Right, uh, don't express, hold it in. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, it's weak to cry or it's weak to right. express. It's weak man to, up. Yeah, exactly. Man up. All these things that we've heard as, you know, growing up, Yeah. But, you know, um, I always say this thing because it's, it's, I, I feel like it's such a true. And I, I usually use this with my, with my uh, men clients when I coach, you know, they always say like, oh yeah, I just want to, you know, um, my value is courage, you know, and I want to go out there and I want to, you know, jump out of the plane or do something yeah. that like, you know, scares me and all of that. And I say, amazing, great. How about when you are in a conflict with your partner, <laughs> stay, <laughs> feel, right? Now that's like, courageous. Oh, no, yeah, that's not, not right? the kind of discomfort I'm about. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. My ego doesn't like that at all. <laughs> no, the ego just wants to keep us safe. Right. Mm -hmm. But the heart just what the heart wants is to connect. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, yes, we tend to go out to, uh, you know, to our mind to start processing. And, you know, of course, like, like we like, like analyzing and, and saying, mm -hmm. you know, I'm feeling these emotions. Okay. And emotions is feeling plus story. Right. Okay. This is in our, in our, okay. philosophy. this is nice. how we distinguish. Right. Nice. So yes, right. I'm, I'm angry or I'm whatever hurt because whatever because of you usually right the partner hurts me right and it's right. easy because all of that happens in the mind so many justifications so many reasons i can point to so <laughs> many things why that's happening right okay how would it be to just forget about all of that sure yes whatever but how about coming down from your mind you know and to your heart yeah. and feeling and saying okay i'm gonna stay here i'm gonna with my partner which is the hardest thing and by the way i'm not saying that we're perfect we're, you know, this is a, this is a journey, right? This yeah. is a journey, right? Yeah. But to stay there and, and look in each other's eyes and, and feel, mm -hmm. right? Feel what you feel, not like, oh, I'm going to look at you with anger and this is what you did to me, but I'm not <laughs> saying it. No, no, no. Bring it back to you and just feel now, mm -hmm. that's courage. And that's powerful. And that's power. Yeah. That's how you bring your power back to yourself. Mm -hmm. It's easy mm -hmm. to, to leak power and to give it away, you know, mm -hmm. and then we go into the victim and oh, of course, justifications and all of these reasons. Right. Mm -hmm. But bringing back the power to yourself is through feeling. Mm -hmm. right? And I don't know about you guys, but I find like what you're talking about with the, just not attaching stories. It's, it's, it's in the body, right? Mm -hmm. So you feel it in your body and it's like, and a lot of us, like for me, a common practice for me is when I'm driving around, I'll be like, what are you feeling right now? I'll ask myself that out oh. loud just to become more familiar with how my body feels with different emotions. And I'll be like, oh, I feel kind of down. I'm like, that's not, that's not a feeling. What, what do you mean down? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, uh, I don't know, like sad. No, that's not sad. fear. 
<laughs> I'm like, oh, whoa, you know? And it's like, okay. And then, yeah, sometimes I go into a story. What are you, what are you afraid of? It's like, oh, I'm feeling anxiety about that thing later. And it's like, okay, it's yeah. like, I, I hear you. And not that it's okay. That used to be my pattern. Like, it's okay. You don't have to be afraid of that. Oh, <laughs> it's the opposite of feeling. Yeah. Your, it's just like, it's just like, oh, okay. Like acknowledged. Yes. I feel afraid got it. You know? And it's like, you don't have to go into the stories as much. It's a more efficient way of like learning. I feel like is just like noted. I feel afraid about that or noted. Just let the anger run its course. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like taking a fever medication when you don't really need it. It's like, you're just making that sickness last longer. Mm -hmm. I call it a toddler behind the baby gate. All right. Do you guys have kids? We do. Yeah. Okay. So like, so like, you know, like the little baby gates you put in the doorways, this is how I see when we, when we're not willing to feel our emotions. Right. So you're like on the phone and your little two-year-old or one-year-old, they're like, eh, and they're like shaking the baby gate and you're like ignoring them and blah, blah, blah. You're talking to your sister or whatever. And they're like, eh, and they, they start shaking it and you're like, oh, like trying to kind of ignoring them. And they're like, oh, and they're like shaking it and crying. And then you like go over and you like get face to face and you're like, what's up? And they're like, I saw a spider, you know? <laughs> And then they're good. They just wanted to be heard. They just wanted to be, they're like getting so loud because you're ignoring them. And that's how I see our emotions. It's like, you could just feel them and let them run or they can stay in there forever and just get louder and louder until you're like, I don't know what's wrong with me. And yeah, I'm like, back to what I, you guys just talked about. <laughs> I, I think that's so, so powerful and so, so true. And like every time that we're not feeling when we're res- resisting that feeling, it's like mm-hmm. you're leaking your energy because it takes energy. It takes our life force nice. energy to like totally. not feel what's naturally coming up. And I love like, don't change it. Like this is anger. Anger yeah. needs to come through. Like it's so powerful. Yeah. I'm feeling fear. Okay. It's normal. Fear is part of our human experience. We're not here to like not feel the natural feelings, you know, <laughs> it's like, but when I think when, when I, you know, telling ourselves that story, like judging, I know you shouldn't, you know, you got to feel that you got to feel this. It's <laughs> right. like, that takes energy. That's like, con- mm-hmm. that brings us into that stress energy and wipes us out. You know, mm-hmm. whereas when you allow yourself to feel that brings you into the heart, brings you into the body. And that's like part right. of your vitality flow. That's why people usually get more energy after. And that's one way to like, no, a lot of times, oh, the more like when you're actually feeling those feelings, there's like energy and vitality because that motion just moved through you. And now you're just allowing it. Whereas like when you're resisting, it's like, it's tiring. It's like, oh, I'm just tired. That's why people reach out for the alcohol or whatever. It's just like, I just can't handle it. You know, like the numbing thing, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say that, you know, you know, in our program, we always teach this, that, you know, there are, um, we always unconsciously ask ourselves these questions, right? And, you know, if you go beyond beyond the, uh, the layer of the questions, evolutionary, there are basically two questions that we always ask ourselves. Number one, and this is at the base of everything. Everything else is built on top of these two questions, right? Number one is, am I safe? This mm-hmm. is the, the, the most, the, the deepest question that we always ask. We don't right. verbalize. It doesn't even rise to the, to the level, right. of the, 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 mind, the, the inner talk, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't rise to that. But we always ask ourselves this question. Mm-hmm. Am I safe? Mm-hmm. And two, do I belong? Am I loved? Mm-hmm. Do I matter? Right? Mm-hmm. Of course, mm-hmm. th- it's attached to am I safe? Because of course, if I belong, if I'm loved, if I matter, then uh, I'm safe. I feel okay, right? right? <clears throat> and so, um, and this is the, the safety piece is why we um, we don't want to feel the feelings. This is, the, you know, we have an aversion. Mm-hmm. And again, it's evolutionary, right? It's not like, okay, let's just accept that piece. Yeah. It's evolutionary. We have an aversion to pain. We have an aversion to pushing beyond our, our comfort zone and, and, and experiencing something that's painful, whether it's physical pain, whether it's emotional pain mm-hmm. or anything like that, right? So yeah. every time, but, but it's, it's, it's paradoxical. Because we say to ourselves, oh, I have this feeling and I don't know exactly what it is or I kind of know what it is, but I, I, I don't want it. I don't want it because it doesn't feel good. And right. so I resist it. I don't want to go there, right? I stay in the story because in the, sto- the story is happening up here. The feeling is happening down here. Yeah. And I've, I've gotten used to my, you know, decades of, of conditioning brought me up here. So it's comfortable. It's easy to stay yeah. up here in that victim energy and say, oh, it's because of this, because of that, because of that person or all these reasons, right? Mm-hmm. But when we resist it, there's an attachment that happened. We attach ourselves to that feeling 
un unwillingly, we don't want it, but it happens, right? right. So uh, we actually tend to um, hold on to it more than it's necessary, more <laughs> than it wants to be with us. Wow. But how would that be, right? To just say, okay, I get the story. I'm going to put it aside or I hear this one thing that we do is always like, especially when we're triggered, especially when we, you know, when we realize, okay, well, I'm in a story, I'm in my mind. I say, okay, I hear you. I hear you, but I'm not going to believe a word you say. Yeah. Like we, I just, I hear everything you're saying, <laughs> but I believe zero. So I go down here and I say, okay, what, like you, like you were saying, what right. do I feel? Oh, I feel fear. Hmm. Okay. I could say I feel fear because of this or because of that. Who cares? Wow. I feel fear. How does that feel? And just breathe through it. Just right. feel it. And right. it's amazing. And you actually brought this up earlier, just a few minutes ago. When we do that, and it takes courage, when, when we do that, something happens. The heart alchemizes and the fear just passes through. And then, um, you know, we realize that the lesson, if we're conscious of it, the lesson, honestly, you know, even if we're not conscious of it, our body learns, our body learns all the time. So if we allow the fear to pass through us or whatever the, the feeling is, our body learns like, oh, I just felt this thing and I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I'm safe. So right. now that question, that deep question of, am I safe? Just wow. got answered, you know, wow. through our body somatically. Beautiful. And that's where the power is. Wow. So you stop having this big resistance to these quote unquote negative emotions because you learned somatically that it's safe to feel that and everything's going to be okay. And yeah. it's actually kind of optimal, not kind of definitely optimal and, and easier. And you're talking about that resistance. And yeah, that's, I mean, because most of us don't have experience with it because of the way we were all raised was like, this is how you should feel, or I'm going to, you know, like I, I still have, I'm like, oh my, and if, sorry, I totally remember you guys have two girls. I don't know if you have more kids. Yeah, I, like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but like, you know, when my kids were younger and I was less conscious, it would be like, I can't hear you when you talk like that. Like it was this very like denial. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm like trying so hard to like, it's totally cool. Like, Oh yeah. That's how you feel. Like <laughs> I'm trying to like, it's, you can feel however you want to feel. Yeah. You know, but, um, we all got conditioned like that of like, this is how you should be. This is how you should feel. And that's like, before I get into my last point, I really want to, I actually really want to ask you, I feel like Madalena, you probably had this too, but Chris, I feel like with this, like you represent your entire country, like you, you know, mm -hmm. that like this outside in pressure of like total self-denial of like, no, 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 no. It's not how you, you actually feel or what you actually want to do. It's like, should, 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 should. What was that process like for you when you were like, I kind of had that too with like religion, right? It was just like, this is mm -hmm. how you should be and anything less than that. You should feel shame or guilt. And, you know, there's somebody in your head watching you all the time. It's not just you, like, you know, every single thought is being judged and, oh, it's like a little schizo, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so that's how I felt anyway, that's for that's me personally. Funny. And so what was that like, you know, I guess to both of you, cause I'm sure you had that too, Madalena with this, like, I am perfect, you know, like I got I an achiever Can you, it's kind of tough, but can you describe the process of like the manual day to day? So someone's listening to this and they're kind of still in this should thing. And then it's like allowing yourself to like connect to yourself instead of this outside in can, do you have any thoughts on like the nitty gritty of that process that might be helpful for people, what that feels yeah. like? No, absolutely. And it, it, it's funny. Uh, I, I almost, as you were describing it, I almost felt like, wow, were you this, um, this, I don't know, light being that was like watching me or like with, <laughs> along my life? How do you Been know there. this thing? Been there. How do you know? Yeah. You know, no, but it's so true because it's, it's funny. Even the other day, we're just reflecting to each other, this thing of, um, you know, we have these natural responses, right? Uh, the fight or flight, for example, right fight or flight it's a natural nervous system response and that's that's in the feeling that it's 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 good oh my god this is what kept us safe all these you know millennia right as as a human you know um but growing up with with especially you know I, I don't know about you but we both had unconscious parents you know so most people i bet they they all have the same yeah, yeah this all, <laughs> it's humanity you know but you know mm -hmm. um when i would have this natural fight or flight um, response or needing to feel something, I was always told, no, you cannot feel that. 
No, right. you cannot do that, right? Mm-hmm. So now imagine this at, uh, as, a, as a child growing up, trying to learn everything through uh, modeling, you right. know, I, I, I was forced and this I'm saying me, but this is a story of humanity, to be honest, yeah. of most of the men, or if not all of the men that I've met that I've worked with, right, is mm-hmm. that, you know, instead of feeling that feeling, automatically, we go to the head. Right. And we, we get stuck in here and say, okay, let me strategize. What <laughs> yeah. should I do? What, what, did, what do they want from me? How should right. I behave? Right? right. So that has been my, my story, all the shoulds, all these things. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you mentioned for you, it was religion. Mm-hmm. For me, it was my mom. Mm-hmm. Um, she had this um, thing that she used to pride herself, you know, through saying that, oh, I've, I've uh, educated my kids through shame, through shaming. So that was her thing, you know, um, this is, you know, so on one hand, I, there was this environment that they said to me, you cannot, you have to be on your best behavior, your best, you know, image, put the best image forward. And then if I did anything wrong in that, in the same environment, I would be shamed. Mm-hmm. So I grew up with the shoulds, mm-hmm. shaming, guilt. This was, these were my drivers, so to speak. This was driving everything. And, um, you know, for me, um, it was really just bringing in, and I know that for many men, this will sound a little bit, um, this, imp- no, not, no, the, 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 the conditioning is that this sounds like this is not powerful, but trust mm-hmm. me, it is so powerful mm-hmm. to bring that self-love mm-hmm. to, to bring yourself back to yourself and say, you know what, this has been my journey so far. And I love my journey because it brought me to where I am today. Yeah. But from this point on, I get to choose. You know, I always say maturity is growing out of the patterns that we grew into growing up. <laughs> yeah. Right? And that's what you were saying about the remembering. It's like, oh, I remember me like when I was like mm-hmm. four or three. That's like, the, <laughs> that's what we're doing. We're just trying to go back to that. <laughs> like you're saying before all the conditioning came in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's just a ma- it's a matter of you know uh, choosing, but choosing with compassion and realizing that it is a journey. Yeah. yeah, you know, I realized at one point there was a point in my life where I realized there was uh, this moment of awakening, so to speak, right? Where I realized, oh wow, I am like everything in my life is driven by the shoulds. Like I am feeling most of the time, I'm feeling anxiety because I am practicing self shaming. Yeah, it was done right. from outside, but now it's from right. inside. This was this is what right. I'm doing. Right. And, you know, to decondition all of that, it, it takes time Yeah, to be patient with all of that because it, it, it's not like you have to get somewhere. There's no timeline on this, right? Just live your life, you right. know, just live your life right. with passion, that self-compassion. Right. So yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. One thing that I like kind of a general practice that I have every day, because it's again, like you said, it's right. not like, oh, okay. Now I learned my lesson. I'm back in my heart. I'm always in my heart. I'm and done. Yeah. I am perfect. I am the light, you know, <laughs> no, it's not like that. It's like a, yeah. it's, we're, we're human beings. We're yeah. like, people, we're living a human life. So it's, it's really a, to me, it's like a couple of two steps. If I were to just kind of codify like simple, mm. uh, number one is a loving awareness where, oh, there I go with my yeah. shooting. Oh, there's my old habit of me. That's, yeah. It's like on myself. Oh, there, there I am. Like I'm, I'm saying that like, oh, there I am. And I'm smiling. I'm not going to be like, oh my God, there I there I, because if we actually are, you know, conscious, we're going to realize, wow, there's a lot of that. We're doing a lot of that. And so right. why, you know, and the heart is inviting us to be compassionate and lighthearted, not heavy about it, you know, because right. our old patterns to be heavy and the heavy brings right. you back into the nervous system. Right. So, oh, there I am judging him. Oh, there I am judging me. Okay. <laughs> I'm human. Okay. I, and then, and then it's a matter of what do I choose? So, you know, you talked about the two questions of the, the, you know, the The two questions of the nervous system, Mm -hmm. right. And the two questions of the heart is like, well, what is true and what, what is loving to you? What is true and what is loving? So then it's a matter of, oh, there's my pattern of this and this. So, so what is my truth and what is me being loving to me right now? What does that look like? And it's something you feel, you know, the mind is thinking, but the heart is feeling. Mm -hmm. So that's like the two step. And then it's about, okay, I'm listening and then I'm acting. So I'm not reacting. I'm, I'm pausing, I'm being, you know, pausing, being, feeling like Mm -hmm. what's loving, what's true. Ah, okay. Okay. I got it. I got it. (laughs) 
Okay. It's like slowing down, you know, yeah. then you go yeah. do that thing. It's a choice. And yeah. the mind's going to tell you it's not a choice because you can't, you know, and you're like, you slow down, you get, get out of the beta activity, the mind, like when you're in that high stress energy in the beta, 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 beta can't get to the heart. So you got to slow down, take deep breaths. Mm-hmm. Now go into the alpha. Now you're able to like connect to your heart. You know, you can't mm-hmm. be like, Oh my God, okay. The heart, what do you think I should do? You know, it doesn't work like that. You know, you have to mm-hmm. slow down, take some deep breaths, there I am doing that. Okay. I'm slowing down. Okay. I'm breathing. Ah, okay. Now I can hear my heart and then you go do it. And beautiful. it's like it's just a beautiful process of takes a mm. couple minutes, you know, it, it's, it's um, ultimately it's about what we call practicing heart resilience. Mm. Okay. Because uh, you know, in our uh, philosophy, you know, the heart to lifestyle is about um, living a heart centered life, right? But what does that mean? And how do you live a heart-centered life? And a lot of times people say, well, it's easy for you guys. You've been doing this for all this time. And, you know, I always remind people, look, it's not about being, living a heart-centered life is not about living in your heart all the time. It's just impossible because we are swimming against the current of decades of conditioning. It's not easy, right? Right. You know, even after 10 years, it's not easy. So Mm -hmm. um, heart resilience is about always coming back. Oh, I left. No problem. Come back. I left, no problem. And the no problem is, is, is the, mm. the power here because that's where the, 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 the compassion comes in. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Self-compassion. I don't know if you've read that book by Kristen Neff, but I like, mm-hmm. I feel like it's just like the gateway to, yeah. I don't even, I don't even know if I can call it personal growth anymore. It's just, it's not really growth. It's just like being, being, gen, being in a higher frequency or just, uh, self-acceptance and unconditional love and love of others. It's not really like growth. It's just like coming back into our true natures, you know, (laughs) but self-compassion is the key to that. So I hear a lot of that laced in what you guys are doing, which is awesome. And I also have to say, I think it's the part of your story when you were like, your friends were like, what's going on with you guys? Something's different. And then you went back and you were like, okay, how do we actually like map this out? That is so hard. I just have to say it. Like I get it. It is so it's like, they always say like professional athletes don't often know like why they're good at what they do. It's really hard on a, on a journey like this to be like, what actually happened here? How did we get here? Like, I don't know. There was a lot going on, you know? And so kudos for, for doing this. And also, I mean, like being a cardiologist, being in that world, and then like having the courage to like feel, be in that pause of like, what feels aligned for me? What feels in my highest interest and you coming on board. I mean, that was a lot of, um, I don't even want to say courage, just like listening, honoring, you know? (laughs) And so it's so cool that you guys did that. And so I, on your website, so people have a place to go. I know you guys have a masterclass on Mm -hmm. this, but can you like tell people a little bit more about heart Q and what it is and what you guys have? Yeah, basically, you know, it's kind of a four step process, you know, type of thing where basically the hard cube process, just like, you know, Einstein said, you know, you can't solve the problem with the same consciousness that created it, Mm -hmm. you know, so like all the things that we have done in so many ways, you know, if I were to go back when I was trying to on my own come back into my heart, well, I only know my own consciousness and that's the consciousness that created my reality. So I'm going to use the same consciousness the same way. Like that doesn't work. Right. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's, it's like, you know, when we work with people, it's not like I'm the light and I'm going to tell you, no, it's like (laughs) we are the holders right? you to unfold, you know, say your power is within you. Like we believe in empowerment. We believe like in and people are the heroes. We are, they are the heroes and we're just the guides kind of supporting them in their right. unfolding. And, you know, the first step kind of like with heart you know, heart intelligence, first step is we call it the awareness, which is the part where we help them what it looks like to turn the lights on. So they're nice. just living life and I'll turn lights on and saying, oh, oh yeah. Oh, th- these are the patterns. Oh, that came from that. And nice. that came. Oh, like, you know, that's the first part now. So like the turning lights on, now you're seeing the truth, right? Second step is, okay, turning lights on is one thing, but your nervous system has a different thing. You know, there's feelings, there's emotions. So there's a part of the expression, part of the feeling, part of the release that, you know, we support people with. And then, and then the third one is like really deepening, really, what does that look like for them to really come into their selves and to, to feel 
feel like the presence of their own love, that spaciousness. Mm -hmm. And now to feel that, to discover that for themselves, because I know when I was back there, I had no idea. What does that even mean? Who am I? Once I realized all these patterns. So who the heck am I anyway? Right. It's like Mm -hmm. that is a process in itself. So there's a way of really deeply reconnecting and discovering and remembering, you know, who you are. And now the fourth part is, okay, now that I can feel more of me, now, what does it look like to create life from that place, you know, to act from that place and create life now from this place of alignment, rather than from the other one that I had created for, out of my unconscious patterns. Nice. So that's kind of like the the way, you know, so all, all of our programs are in some expression of that process, really, yeah. because that's what we found, you know, really helps. Yeah. And we have the program as, um, as a safe, self-paced uh, online program as well. We do cohorts so we can support people live. And uh, of course, the, the most powerful way that we support people is through coaching, you know, yeah. because uh, every uh, Luke Skywalker needs a Yoda, right? And, yeah. and yeah. you know, and and uh, they are the hero that like, like Marilena said, you know, we're just guiding. And a lot of times people, what I, what I found is that there's this, there's this power inside of them. There's this powerful light inside of them and they just cannot see it. They feel it, yeah. but they just yeah. cannot see it and they cannot crack it open. Right? right. So this is kind right, of what right. we do. Right. It's it's not about change because change. If you change one one way, you can also change back. Right. So change is is transitory. Uh, what we do in the coaching is transformational. Right. So we're looking for that transformation, that that cracking mm-hmm. open. Right. That like you can see and embody and feel your own power, and then mm-hmm. of course create your life that you dream of from 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 there. Yeah, it's like the it's like the unbecoming <laughs> of who you are not. And being right. who you are. Yeah. That's it. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's these little onion layers. That's what I felt like as I've been going through my, it's like, there was this onion and it was like the little thin, that little thin sticky layer, not even the whole onion layer, like at a time. And then I was like, here I am. And it was like my three-year-old self. I'm like, it's <laughs> back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's big work. I mean, like sometimes I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I get hit up with <laughs> because I do health coaching and like mindset type coaching people be like, I'm good on the mindset stuff. <laughs> I'm like, <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> I'm like, wow. I <laughs> like respect. You must be so, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm messing with people, but sometimes it's like the way I like to point it out is like, do you feel unhappiness or is there issues in your relationships? And it's like this ongoing thing, you know, like, is that kind of stuff happening? It's like, that's what you guys are doing. Like, it's like, it's not, you're not going to figure it out with your head. Like you said, it's got to come from a tool. It's like Mars. It's going to feel like Mars walking on Mars. Like it's going to be like, huh? I didn't realize this (laughs) reality was available to me. Does anybody else live here? Other people already knew about this. Oh my gosh. You know, that's what it feels like. It's like you like literally died and now you're like, Oh, living in this new realm, you know, that's really the work you guys are doing. So it's really important. And I just wanted to highlight that. So if any of this resonates with you guys, you can go to heart Q, just the letter Q.com and they've got everything on there. And then you guys have a social media. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Heart Q. Yeah. Heart Q official. Uh, yeah. I mean, heart, heart Q official. Uh, yeah, uh, Instagram, at Instagram mm-hmm. and HeartQ at, at uh, on Facebook. So okay, awesome, yeah. you guys rock! Thank you so Thank much you, for coming on and sharing for the work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. <laughs>